Hey guys, it's Howitzer here. I was recently watching some behind the scenes footage from Prometheus where they were talking about the movie's original titles. When the film was early in development, all of the titles were alien related. We had titles like Alien Origins, Alien Tomb of the Gods, Alien Engineers, Alien Paradise Lost, or even just Paradise. Eventually, Ridley ended up changing the name to Prometheus. This was partially due to the studio, Fox, wanting to remove the alien from the forefront of the movie and place an emphasis on the engineers instead. Now the studio has done a complete 180 on this idea and the films have alien related titles such as Alien Covenant and Alien Awakening. I figured that some of you may not know why they went with the final title, so today I want to take a closer look at Prometheus. First off, Prometheus is a titan. In Greek mythology, the titans were the second generation of divine beings. They were the descendants of the primordial deities. The primordial deities, of course, were the first beings of divinity to the Greeks. I won't go into the primordials too much, but we can note that it was Gaia and Uranus that gave birth to the titans. The titans were in power until Cronus and Rhea gave birth to Zeus, Poseidon, Hades, and the other third generation of divinities known to us as the Greek gods. The meaning of the name Prometheus is forethought, explained as a careful consideration of what will be needed or what is to take place in the future, a fitting name for a prequel. The stories about Prometheus do vary somewhat depending on who is telling the story and when. In some stories, it was Prometheus who crafted the first man from clay by the order of the Greek god Zeus. Prometheus and his brother, Epimetheus, had sided with the gods during the War of the Gods and the Titans, so we do have some overlap of divine generations here. Prometheus had forethought, so he took his time to craft man, shaping him in the image of the gods, making him stand up straight in order to look to the heavens. But in other stories, it was the gods who made all the creatures of Earth, and it was Prometheus and his brother who were to give certain gifts unto man in order to help them survive. His brother, being the god of afterthought, ended up giving out all of his gifts before he got to man, gifts such as fur, wings, or claws, all meant to help in the survival of these creatures. Prometheus, now feeling sorry for the naked state of man, snuck into the workshop of Hephaestus in order to steal away the gift of fire to give to man. It is also said that he taught man the art of metalworking and blacksmithing, and he is later tied to science and culture. In another tale of Prometheus, the titan ended up tricking the god Zeus. Zeus had decreed that man must present a portion of each animal that they killed and ate to Zeus. Prometheus, having disdain towards Zeus for the war against the titans, created two piles of the animal kill for Zeus to pick from. One pile was made with bones but wrapped in fatty tissues. The other pile contained all the good meat but it was wrapped up by the hide. Zeus ended up choosing the first pile. After noticing that the titan had tricked him, Zeus became angry. He had given his word that whatever pile he would choose would end up as his share for all future sacrifices, so he didn't go back on his deal, he instead decided to punish the trickster titan. As punishment, he decided to take fire back from man. Prometheus, in rebellion, lit a torch from the sun and returned the gift of fire to man. As you can imagine, Zeus was enraged by this act of treason. Now we get to the famous punishment in which the titan was to be chained to a rock or pillar. Zeus then sent an eagle to eat the liver of Prometheus, which would regrow each night, only to have the eagle return to eat it again the following day in an endless cycle of sacrifice, creation, and punishment. Hercules would later help out Prometheus by killing this eagle. Man wasn't exempt from the mad god Zeus's retribution, however, and he in turn created Pandora, the first woman who would bring unto man toil, illness, war, and death, effectively separating mankind from the gods. So why did Ridley Scott choose the title Prometheus for his movie? Well, it should be pretty obvious so far, Prometheus in some stories was the creator of mankind. In the movie, it's thought that the engineers created man. In other stories, although the titan didn't create man, he stole from the gods in order to grant man the gift of fire. We see a parallel here with Wayland and the humans looking to gain information and technologies from their creators. 
We can also look at the design of the engineers and see an almost titan-like quality with the muscular body structure to the sharp chiseled facial features. Ridley has said that the prequels to Alien all have a structure to them of sacrifice, creation, and punishment. And this structure is very clearly shown in the stories of Prometheus and in the history of engineers, man, and the artificial intelligence that was created by man. The humans and the engineers in the movie can be seen in the light of Prometheus. The engineers are using godlike powers in creating and destroying life as they see fit in their own image. They are even shown to be worshipping either themselves by looking at the giant stone heads in the ampule room, or they are possibly shown to be worshipping the deacon-like Xeno creatures shown in the mural in the same room. The stone heads aren't confirmed to be engineers, however, so this is speculation. For all I know, this is in fact their creator and they were made in his image. Mankind is showing the same god complex in the movie. Wayland is terraforming and creating worlds to his liking, and they also have created AI in their own image to be a servant of man. The goal of Wayland is to approach these creators in order for them to share their powers with him, hopefully granting him immortality. We can see here how the creator and the created are acting in a similar nature. It is speculated in the film that the engineers are upset by man seeing them as replacing their creator and doing their own creating, in their own image. This is thought to be why the engineer in the original Alien film is taking his cargo to Earth to wipe out the offenders and possibly start life anew on the planet. According to AlienCovenant.com, they have some information that may be pointing to an alien race that is above the engineers. I can't help but think that they may view the engineers with the same contempt that the engineers now view mankind with. This goes back to Ridley's original thoughts of creation for the alien universe. He has been quoted as saying, What if you met your creator, and there was nothing divine about them, nothing special, they simply created other beings because they could. No good intentions, just scientific trial and error. He thought it was arrogant for man to view himself as a superlative in the universe, and that they may be minor in the big scheme of things. Now I know many people are upset about the tie-ins to the movies with stories of creation. In my mind, these prequels are just meant to show that creation, sacrifice, and punishment are rampant in the alien universe, and that in said universe, the early human stories of creation told around the world were actually man's attempt to understand the vastly superior beings that visited them and possibly created them, the engineers. The important part being is that the engineers aren't special. In fact, they have the same faults and hubris of man. My question is, are the race of beings that are said to be above the engineers any different? I'd bet that they aren't. Man created AI to be a servant of man did the engineers create man in the same vein? What do you guys think? Let me know down in the comments, and if you like the video, if you could leave a like, it helps out the channel so much, and if you haven't subscribed yet, why not for all the alien content to come in the future. Thanks again for watching everybody, take care, and I will see you next time.